any conflict, I don't care with any ET civilization, would be the complete destruction of their planet and ours. It would be much worse than a, a, a massive global thermonuclear war exchange. So there is no possible future except a peaceful one. So let's figure out how to do that. No matter what your belief systems about these various civilizations that are out there, my own assessment is that some are not really thrilled with us because, well, who wouldn't be? And some are maybe our distant cousins. And some are just getting involved and looking with some horror at what's happening. But ultimately, none of them are overtly hostile. If they were, it'd be over. And let me tell you, it would have been over the, when we dropped the first atomic bomb. And I've been told that by multiple members of MAGIC, M-A-J-I-C, because they have said, yeah, of course. I mean, any, but it's very easy to play on people's paranoias and fears through mutilations and abductions. And this Dr. John Altshuler I mentioned, who is the nephew of Jimmy Doolittle, General Doolittle, he became the guy who did the first Snippy the Horse case. You know, Snippy the Horse, the, the, cat, the cattle mutilation and animal mutilation case. That was him. He didn't get acknowledged because he wanted to stay in the background. But he was the scientist. He, I was staying at his home outside Denver. And he said, absolutely, that case was military. Made to look E.T. for the purpose of scaring the hell out of people. I said, really? He says, absolutely. And then I met with a man. It was an accidental. You know, the universe works in strange ways. I'm sitting on a flight. Uh, flying, uh, I think, from Colorado or New Mexico to the East Coast. And I'm, the guy sitting beside me says, oh, I said, well, I'm a doctor. And he says, well, what are you doing out here? I said, well, I actually do stuff with UFOs. He says, oh, you're kidding. He says, let me tell you. And he owned a 250,000-acre ranch in northern New Mexico. And he said, let me tell you what they're doing to my cattle. And he, and he said, but it's not alien. It's humans, and he, was, he had night scopes. He, put, he was a very wealthy man. And he said, these guys are coming in there with special silent helicopters, and we have them. My military advisor was on a ship where one landed in a fog, and they, were, they couldn't see it. And they said, where is it, where is it? They said, it's, look up, it's right above you, and there's no sound, completely quiet. He says, and we caught them red-handed doing these mutilations on my cattle. And, I, and he instituted a lawsuit against the U.S. government, but the group doing it was an unacknowledged group that's extra-constitutional, and the U.S. government said, we don't know anything about it. And the government people they, who said that were telling them the truth. See, this is real plausible deniability, right? Because they can honestly say, we don't know anything about this. So he took it all the way through the federal court system. It just got thrown out. Even though he had dispositive evidence, human paramilitary and U.S. military assets were doing it. And, uh, you know, I, I've shared this with Linda Moot and Hal and others, you know, an alien harvest. I said, alien baloney. This is being done by people who want to scare the hell out of the public as part of this psychological warfare that was launched in 1953. But there's another reason for it. They're getting raw materials that they do take from that. It's hard to do it underground. Take them to underground bases, which become culture media for the program life forms, the the man-made ETs I'm talking about. We don't have time to go into what these nanotechnological things are, but let me just say cloning. Dolly the sheep wasn't the first cloned creature. So with the right electromagnetic pulse, it's very easy to clone a human or an ET or take tissue from one, but you need some kind of biological medium. And that's what the, the cattle mutilations provide and the other animal mutilations provide the biological medium for these experiments in the development of man-made fake ETs. And by the way, there was a, an intelligence official who kept calling Stan Romanek, telling him when he had that creature come into his kitchen and said, Stan, it's one of the fake ones. And he didn't know what it meant. I went out there with a MUFON investigator who investigates abductions. I said, yeah, it's a fake one. And he says, what do you mean? I said, I've been talking about this for 20 years. The, the literature is replete with the military invo involvement in these abductions. It's a fake one. It's man-made. It's made to look alien, to scare the hell out of people, but because it puts fear out in the community. I said, it's not extraterrestrial. It's man-made. But the cattle mutilations do two things. They provide a nexus for more fear. Oh, my God, not only are they abducting people, they're mutilating. But then it creates a source of biological substrate material for the 
nano bio machines that are these biologicals that look alien. And that was because they were taking them to Dulce, which was near his ranch. Same thing at Pine Gap. I have a science physicist who worked at Pine Gap in Australia, and it's all subterranean, and he worked on projects. He says, we have these creatures coming off like sausages on a conveyor belt. Absolutely. And I was at a meeting in Australia a couple years ago, and the Minister of Defense for Australia was there. He didn't know anything about this stuff. We had a very interesting conversation. But um, I said, no, you wouldn't. I said, our Secretary of Defense doesn't know about this either. But that is really what's happening. So you have to think that, well, if we can make our way through this nexus of fear and false information that has kind of colonized everyone's mind, then we can go out there with close encounters of the fifth kind teams and make peaceful contact with these civilizations. How beautiful. And that's why I tell people, don't be afraid of anything interstellar. You should be very concerned about paramilitary human. But the interstellars, not a problem. And I think you have to make a distinction. People say, well, how do you tell the difference? Well, an ET craft has no seams. The light from it is coming from refined materials that are so pure that the light itself looks like celestial. The beings themselves have a completely non-invasive, um, very intelligent, I mean, IQ of 400, 500, that range, uh, and very conscious and spiritual. Um, the PLFs, are menacing, they're invasive. The man-made Lockheed Martin, Northrop, SAIC, uh, man-made discs, saucers, triangles, have rivets and seams. Um, it's quite clear to tell the difference, but you need to know there is a difference first, because otherwise you're gonna think everything is alien, and it's not. And that's why I'm doing this webinar with thousands of people watching, it's gonna go up on the, on the web, is that the public needs to know the difference between the real and the false, and what the agenda is for the false one, and how easy it is, whether it's through a cosmic 9-11 or some other scenario, to manipulate the public into fear and get on a war footing where we then suspend our liberties, our freedoms, and spend trillions of dollars and countless lives in a concocted, hoaxed battle. Don't be fooled again. We need to not be fooled again. And this is the big one that we need to be wake up to. If enough of us wake up to this and then go out and make peaceful contact, then those folks who want to see us create a time of endless war can't have their way. They only succeed if you are sheeple who are going to follow along with the conventional wisdom like zombies half asleep. So I beg you to share this with everything, everyone you know. Uh, and go out there and make 